Good evening and welcome to this Farm Advisory Service webinar. Um, tonight's meeting, we will this will be the first of a series of three meetings uh, that we're going to explore topics all relating to selling produce, specifically meat in this particular instance, uh, from your croft, your small holding or your farm. Uh, the core topic of tonight's meeting that we're going to discuss is that of marketing. So assuming that you've considered what product you want to sell, but you're determined what market you might wish to tap into, what methods you might want to employ um, to get your product out there, uh, how perhaps you might want to sell um, that, that product, what sort of method you want to, to, to go down and what sort of schemes and help that might be out there as well. That's the aims that tonight's meeting is going to stimulate some of these ideas for you. We've got two speakers tonight. Uh, the first is Callum Johnson, who joins us from the SEC Food and Drink team. Callum will talk you through the principles of marketing as well as convey some ideas and success stories and things like that. Callum's been very heavily involved in, in this right across the country. Uh, and our second speaker, speaker is Gordon Newlands of QMS, uh, who will explain some of the work and schemes that QMS have in place specific to the red meat industry and how it may be of benefit to you. So uh, what I'll do is I'll hand you over to Callum, uh, who will take you through his presentation for the next sort of half hour or so. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Callum Johnston. I work in the food and drink team at SEC Consulting. My work involves supporting small to medium sized food and drink producers across Scotland, and I also specialise in farm diversification and agritourism. Tonight, I'm going to introduce the topic of marketing and hopefully um, give you some hints, tips and ideas uh, when considering adding value to your livestock and, as Rob says, selling direct to consumers. So, my short uh, sort of half hour um, sort of introduction on the topic of marketing, I'm going to cover uh, the following points. So I'm going to touch on consumer trends and how COVID-19 has driven consumer demand to support local farmers and food producers. I'll also cover where to start. So those of you thinking about selling direct, how and where to begin your journey. We'll look at box schemes uh, for meat and also uh, veg products. I'll touch on farm vending, uh, which is um, a sort of new innovation uh, in the sector. And then finally, I'll cover web development and social media. If my slide will change, um, we will have a wee look at COVID-19 and the rise in demand for locally sourced food. Now, when you think about it, it has now been a whole year since COVID-19 was first discovered in Wuhan, uh, China. And come March, the 23rd of March, um, that will be a whole year since the UK and many other countries across the world have been uh, very much locked down, placing huge restrictions on our everyday lives. Now, while this global pandemic has caused you know, huge disruption and sadly it's claimed the lives of so many people. One big positive and major step forward is, is growth in support uh, for local farmers, food producers and also for independent um, businesses. When you cast your mind back uh, to the first lockdown in, Ma in March last year, there was panic buying in the supermarkets, uh, you know, consumers stockpiling um, their fridges, freezers and cupboards uh, in the fear of food shortages. When supplies started uh, to run dry, consumers turned their attention locally to local farms, farm shops and independent food and drink businesses. During this time, uh, consumers also quickly became aware of where their food comes from. And you know, it sort of exposed that we as a country, as a nation, are heavily reliant on imported food from other countries. And also the air miles and pollution that this, this inevitably causes. I guess another positive of the pandemic has been the real sense of community, where people have been willing to help neighbors, friends and family through very difficult, uh, difficult times. And we've almost, in some ways, we've almost seen a step back in time where milk and fresh produce is delivered directly to people's doorsteps. I've spoken to dairy farmers and milk processors specifically um, that have reported a 30 to 40 percent rise in doorstep deliveries of fresh milk and other uh, associated milk products. Some 
Some local online food markets and food hubs have seen online sales increase by around 300%, and some have actually struggled uh, to keep up with this, uh, with this strong demand. More and more consumers are doing uh, cooking or sort of home cooking and baking. You know, with more, more time on our hands and also a feeling of wanting to be kind of creative in the, in the kitchen, there's now more cooking from scratch over ready meals. People are not out traveling for work. Uh, they're not eating on the go as much as they, as they used to. And as a result, consumers are buying fresh ingredients over heavily processed foods. Now this trend, uh, fortunately, um, is, is set to continue. Research, uh, recent research, there's various research has been done, uh, one of which is by Global Data, um, shows that one in three British consumers will continue to visit local shops um, more often um, post lockdown than they did before coronavirus. So there's a sort of overview, and there's huge opportunities uh, for farmers um, and small to medium sized uh, food and drink producers. Now, you might be thinking, right, okay, so, so where do I start? Well, the best place to start is doing market research. The first piece of advice um, that I would, I would give is to speak to potential customers. Spend time looking into your market. You know, go and visit a local shop, give them a call, ask them if your produce is of interest to them. You know, do your, do your homework. Are they already stocking, you know, beef or lamb and therefore they don't need any more? Or is there a gap in their offering that you could fulfill? I would say, you know, have the confidence to go and ask a local shop. Before, <clears throat> before Christmas, I actually, I did a similar session and we had a lady running a small shop over in Arran and she said that she would be delighted to hear from local farmers and crofters as she's always looking for new suppliers. And there we had a willing group of farmers that wanted to sell their, their produce and a willing customer, but it was just joining the two together. So honestly, you know, have the confidence, reach out and speak to people, uh, speak to your sort of intended uh, market. That'll help, that'll sort of help, help you to pin down who and where your market is. You know, is it local shops or is it going to be a doorstep deliveries? Are you looking to go out with a van and sell, you know, sell around your local village or local region? You know, that could be an option too. Another option if you don't want to, you know, have your own van is you could potentially use a distributor or someone else um, to help get your products to market. It's important um, when you're doing your market research to think about pricing. So understand your costs. Try and understand, you know, look at, the, look at your finances. How much is it going to cost you to produce the lamb, beef, mutton, whatever it is you're, you're intending to sell? How much, is it going to, how much is it going to cost to get it slaughtered, butchered, and then packed up? You'll also have distribution costs, and there will be, you know, refrigeration and freezing costs as well if you're wanting to keep a stock um, of your of your produce at home once you've i guess once you've looked at your your costs then then build in your profit margin you know make sure that you pay yourself a good return for for your efforts once you've done that think you know where does that where does your proposed price where does that sit relative to the market is it is it overpriced so if you're selling to a shop they're probably going to add, it's likely they'll add their own margin um, to your products. So then what, is, what does that look like to the end consumer? Now remember that although there is demand for local produce uh, and that consumers, they are willing to pay a premium for local food, consumers are still price conscious. Um, you know, they're willing to treat themselves, but they may also be turned away if, you know, your produce um, or products are significantly more than you know what they could get elsewhere. Another thing to, to think about is, is volume and the sort of seasonality. You know, if you're a small producer with only a few sheep or cows, then continuity of supply to a shop or a sort of another outlet, it could be difficult. You know, think about when when am I going to be fattening? When will they be ready to go to market? Is this actually what the customer customer wants? Are there any particular events, 
throughout the year that you could target, like like the Christmas market or or Easter market, or is it even during the summer um, months for you know like barbecues, for example? So you know there's there's lots there's lots in there. Um, as a small producer, and um, another thing to consider is can can I work with others? So collaboration. I know it's a word that's banded around the industry all the time, but you know, genuinely collaboration and crofters and smallholders working together is a really good opportunity. Working together can also support other local producers and it could also help you to reduce costs. So you could share your resources, sharing transport costs, sharing distribution costs, and also you know, buying packaging in bulk, uh, for example, would be, would be another cost saving. Moving on to some examples of where, uh, some more examples of where you could um, potentially sell. So box schemes. Box schemes are a good way, a really good way of selling meat and veg <coughs> directly to consumers. They're a great way to sell uh, particularly mixed cuts of meat. Um, you know, some cuts are, are better um, and also other cuts of meat are perhaps less quality. Typically, restaurants and hotels, you know, they may look for, you know, some of the better quality cuts. And I have found in the past that some farmers are kind of left with, with, you know, everything else. And it's like, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with all this? Well, box schemes is a really good way to market the whole, the whole animal. And, you know, I've seen some great examples of farmers selling varied, uh, varied meat boxes um, with seasonal recipes or ideas for consumers to try out at home. So as I say, you know, people, consumers at the moment are genuinely interested in, in home cooking and trying new things. So if you are looking to do meat boxes, you know, think of recipe ideas, you know, provide them um, with, some, with some ideas. I've also seen uh, recently some great examples of suppliers working together um, and that whole collaboration piece. So effectively selling, selling meat along with other ingredients to make like a stew or or other home cooked meals. So everything delivered to the consumer is delivered in one, effectively one delivery. The meat, the veg, the potatoes, the herbs and spices and, and sauces. And I've even seen, you know, desserts and home baking. So effectively you've got a three course meal that you could um, potentially offer to, uh, to consumers. I like the idea, I saw one recently, can you provide a meal box dining for two for Valentine's Day? I mean, it's maybe a wee bit late for that now, but you know, um, that's the type of thing that people are, are working, uh, working with. And it's, you know, great idea. Another thing is, you know, in the tourism sector, um, one thing that tourists want to do is they want to sample the range of local produce that's on offer during, during their stay. Now, agri-tourism businesses, um, something that works really well is welcome packs. So a welcome pack, um, maybe a hamper of locally sourced meat, veg, eggs, it could be milk, it could be craft beer, it could be gin from, from the sort of the, the area. And I've even seen arts and crafts um, being, you know, being put in as a really nice sort of welcome for, uh, for visitors. Breakfast boxes, you know, of locally sourced produce is, is a great unique selling point for an accommodation business, and it also adds value to the customer experience. Now, it doesn't have to be the agri-tourism business, you know, that does this. So if you're not an agri-tourism business, you know, don't think you're being left out. You could actually potentially offer the welcome packs um, of fresh produce to bed and breakfasts, hotels, uh, agri-tourism enterprises, you know, campsites and, and, other, and other places. So although we're still, you know, we're still on in, you know, February, we're still in lockdown, um, but there is strong evidence um, that suggests that there's going to be really strong rural tourism demand this summer. So now is a really good time to start planning how you can potentially tap into this, this market. Just touching on, on packaging. Um, packaging, there's lots of suppliers out there of, um, you know, suitable for uh, meat box distribution. You know, I can send you send you some privately if you're at that stage, um, but we, as we all know, <laughs> um, sustainability and sustainable price, uh, sustainable packaging are you know hugely important in our efforts to to reduce plastics, and it's also a hugely important factor for consumers. Real cool, um, 
a, a great uh, company, uh, Woolcool. They produce 100% sustainable integrated packaging that is natural and reusable. Woolcool, they use natural sheep wool to create products um, which keep both chilled and ambient food products at the required uh, temperature for at least 24 hours. And I think, you know, it's a fantastic story. Selling, selling meat and delivering it in fully sustainable packaging that is made from sheep wool, well, that's a real authentic farm to fork, fork story. Everything delivered to consumers has a connection to farming or, or crofting. I'm going to take a drink before my voice crackles. So moving, moving on to, to farm vending. Uh, farm vending is, uh, is a really good opportunity uh, for small farmers and producers. Uh, I believe um, that farm vending, you know, it's, it can be a really good way of farmers and food producers working together, collaborating to provide local food for, for local people. I read a really nice story in the Scottish Farmer a few weeks ago of uh, Jock Gibson of Macbeth Butchers, you know, building a wee shed uh, of a shop at the at the end of the of the farm drive, and has teamed up <coughs> with local farmers to provide meat, veg, and household essentials to the local community. Farm vending is it's a relatively low cost way of selling direct uh, to consumers. Vending machines that are available twenty four seven and they don't need to be staffed like uh, a traditional farm shop. They can be custom built to your requirements and the technology is so advanced now that customers, they can use contactless payments, touchscreen pads, they can use Apple Pay from their mobile, mobile phones <clears throat> and producers get instant data and updates on orders, things like stock levels and any issues with uh, the machines. Their machines, they, they sort of vary in price. Uh, the ones on the screen, you know, they're quite advanced um, models and um, they're almost pretty much a farm shop um, with, no, with no staff. Um, machines, you know, if you're looking to start, start relatively small, um, a, a good machine of 28 lockers uh, for an ambient machine is gonna cost you about 9,000 uh, pounds. If you're looking for a, a refrigerated machine, it'll set you back probably about 12 to, to 14,000 for 28 lockers. <clears throat> and as we, you know, as, as lockdown does ease, you know, we're, we're likely to see lots more people out and about in the countryside. So having a vending machine, you know, in a local, you know, in a, a, an area which has got a high, high footfall, well, that's a, a fantastic opportunity where, you know, potentially crofters and small producers can, can work together um, to, to supply. I'm going to touch on web development um, just sort of briefly. Um, if you're looking to sell produce directly um, to consumers, then it's, it's a good idea to have your own website. Um, you need some sort of platform to promote to your produce. Your, your website is your, it's your shop window. It's where consumers can browse products, place orders, and they can also, you know, or they can find out where, where, where they can collect um, your produce. Now, the first thing to think about is, what do you want your website to do? Is it simply an information portal where they can find out information about your business, your products, and where to buy? Or is it uh, an e-commerce site uh, which has greater functionality? And it actually allows customers to, to make purchases on your, on your website. <clears throat> E-commerce uh, functions, you know, they're slightly more, more complex, but it's, it's definitely more convenient for, for customers to make an order when they're there, rather than having to, to sort of remember, oh, that, that was the company that was doing their meat boxes and then try to remember where it is, um, you know, they need to go. That potentially could be, could be a lost sale. But I do appreciate, um, you know, everyone's everyone works with a budget, and um, so both options are definitely uh, available. Now, you, I guess, in terms of web development, my advice to doing to anyone doing it for the first time, you know, if, if you're going to do it, then do do it well. You know, it's it's as I say, it's your shop window, and the first impressions definitely, you know, first impressions definitely count. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is, is they think, oh, my, 
you know, my cousin's daughter, they, you know, they're good on a computer. They can surely build a website for me. Well, you know, unfortunately, that's when when things can go slightly wrong. And, you know, don't get me wrong, they're probably IT experts uh, and they probably can do it. But, you know, if you're if you're going to do it, you know, think about using a professional uh, web developer. Professional web design, depending on the level of functionality and input, uh, it's probably going to set you, it's going to cost in the region of anywhere between sort of £4,000 up to £15,000, depending on, you know, what you're looking to do with it. Now, sort of joking aside, um, you can you can build your own website. Um, you can create a very simple landing page, which gives you know gives customers information about your farm, um, you know your produce that you're selling, some contact details, and it also links. It can link with social media. So, on the screen there, I've I've added the link um, to, to HubSpot, you know, it will help you and sort of guide you in how to, to create your, your own website, if that's what you're, you're looking to do. However, doing it yourself probably won't give you the functionality of ordering um, online shop and payment processing. So if you want consumers to make a purchase on your website, then you, you should really speak to a web developer. A web developer will also ensure that your brand, your, your logos, your fonts, colors, design, and imagery is, is consistent and appears uh, very professional. Again, first impressions uh, count, particularly for new, new customers. I've got a few examples. Um, the one on the left there is Armadale Farm. Uh, those of you watching this farming life at the moment uh, will see uh, Joyce and the family uh, very busy on the farm. The one on the right is uh, Duncan Family Farms. They're based uh, on the banks of Loch Lomond. Um, you can see there they've got you know really attractive websites and there's there's some information about you know the farm, the history of the farm. You can click on accommodation. They've got accommodation portfolio. Uh, their produce, you know, our story, and then contact. You know, there's, there's there's lots of great, great visuals as well. It's very attractive and, and attractive. Now, social media. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing okay. Um, social media. Um, how many of you, just out of interest, um, how many of you are on social media? You know, stick it into the chat. I'd be keen to know, um, you know, who's on social media? What platforms do you use? Uh, do you use it for personal or business? Or it could be a, a combination of both. Stick it in the chat. I'd be quite keen to, to hear from you. You may like it or you may hate it, but the reality is that social media, uh, nowadays, social media is an essential marketing tool. If you're looking to be a consumer facing business, then social media gives you the opportunity to connect with customers. It allows you to tell your own unique story and it also helps you to build an online community. Social media marketing is, it's all about uh, reaching out digitally uh, to your target audience and customers and interacting with them to build, to build a following promoting your products, your brand, and ultimately increasing, leading to increased sales. So you might be thinking, right, well, what, what platform should I, should I use? Well, there's, there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, Facebook, uh, it's definitely still the most popular social media platform, uh, although the number of people using Facebook is starting to, to decline. Facebook's very popular in the, in the farming and crofting sectors. Lots of farmers, crofters, and smallholders use it. Um, you know, they're familiar with the functionality. They find it very useful for researching people and businesses. And the use of Facebook groups in particular is really good for sharing knowledge and, uh, and ideas. Instagram. Um, Instagram is the fastest growing social media platform, and it's set to overtake Facebook's usage in future. Instagram is very popular in the food and drink sector and is, is by far the best. It's my, my own uh, personal choice because it's, it's very visual. Um, you know, lots of images and lots of, lots of videos. Instagram is, is becoming more popular uh, with rural businesses, also in the agri-tourism sector, um, due to its, you know, its, its, you know, its visual and it's also very uh, engaging. 
one picture does tell a thousand words. <coughs> Twitter, um, Twitter is it's very much business to business. Um, it's popular in the business environment. Um, it's good for for sort of industry connections, public sector, sort of academic uh, organisations. You know, here's a here's an upcoming buzz webinar. Here's uh, you know this is happening in industry. You know, here's some some funding. It's all really useful, but perhaps it's not the most. It's not the best suited um, for you know smallholders uh, or crofters looking to sell their their produce. When you're using social media, think about the content um, you, that you're sharing. So social media, to me, social media is not all about selling. It's not all about trying hard to sell your products. Social media is about storytelling. So, so social media is, is your opportunity to tell your brand story and give a sense of personality. Now, through engaging posts, you will be subtly selling your products by telling your story. It's the story behind your products. That's why people buy into you and your, and your brand. Consumers nowadays, people, <coughs> people are four times more likely to engage with human stories. So if you are on social media, you know, it's the posts that you see, you see people and faces behind the brand. So a farmer or crofter out in the field feeding cows or sheep, you know, that's a great way to showcase your, your business, but also the end product without solely pushing, here's my meat box, come and buy my meat box. Okay, so it's, it's just thinking about doing it very subtly and, and using social media to really tell your, your story and your personality. And my final point on social media is, is keep it real, keep it honest, but most importantly, keep it fun and engaging. I've added a link at the bottom. Uh, again, it's, it's to HubSpot. Um, it touches on uh, social media, every, sort of everything you need to know, how to get started. It's uh, social media marketing, the ultimate guide. So have a wee look and, you know, if you've got any questions, um, you, know, you can come back to me at a later date uh, and, and certainly ask. I think moving on to my final slide, um, which is online food hubs, uh, information and advice. Uh, online food hubs and farmers markets are a great way to sell your, your produce directly to consumers, particularly if you don't have your own website or e-commerce functionality. So, you know, I did say, you know, ideally, you know, it'd be good to have your own website. It's not essential. It's not essential to have your own, your own website. Um, you can use like social media, you can use, um, you know, online food hubs um, to sell your, your products. They're great because they bring small producers and food and drink producers, um, you know, together. And, you know, it's bringing a sense of that community feel. It's bringing everyone together uh, and providing a real sense of community, which is, which is great. Uh, Lochaber Foods, or Food Lochaber, as I should say, you know, it's a collective of producers from Lochaber working together um, to provide you know, food and drink um, products to households. They operate through the Open Food Network and you can promote your products um, <clears throat> through their website if, you're, if you live in that, in that area. Neighbour Food and um, just below them, um, there, Neighbour Food is a, collect, um, is, is a great way. They've, they've got multiple farmers markets um, across the country and They've seen a huge uptake, um, particularly during the, the pandemic. So, so how we look there, check out your local. I'm not sure where everyone's what everyone's dialing in from tonight, but check out their website and you can you know look in the search bar and you can type your local area and, and see who's operating in that in that area. Um, one of the one of the benefits of online food hubs is is they give you flexibility. Um, so they give you the opportunity to to dip in and out. And um, so if you don't always have that continuity of supply that I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're a small producer, you're sort of just wanting to dip your toe in, see how you get on. You don't want to fully commit at this stage. Then they're a really good way because, as I say, they give you the flexibility and you don't have to feel uh, pressure to, to supply. I think we might have maybe someone, one or two on from these local areas. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much. I can see Rob nodding there. So I'm not going to 
say any more on that, um, and we can maybe invite them in perhaps at the end, Rob, um, just to maybe speak about that. And hopefully I've not said anything wrong. And if I have, then please correct me. Um, my final um, my final slide is, is really my contact details. Um, that's been a very quick half hour. I'm pleased that I've managed to keep it to half hour, Rob. Uh, I was waiting for you to, 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 to sort of ring the bell um, and say stop. Um, but that's, that's, that's me. Um, my contact details are there, my, my mobile and my email. Please feel free after tonight to get in touch. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, so that's me. And over to you, Rob. No problem. Uh, we'll pass you over to, to Gordon next. Um, but just a, a reminder, we will, we will sort of open up <clears throat> to questions at the end. Um, so people can you know throw questions in and stuff like that. We're not able to uh, to, to possibly answer them all um, as the uh, as the uh, presentations go through, but we can pick them up at the end. There was one question there for you, Callum. Uh, actually, that was that was quite interesting. I didn't have any answer to it at all. Um, it was to do with are there um, suppliers or are there companies that you can get in touch with that uh, you can get quotes for for the farm vending? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the main farm vending supplier um, for ambient and chilled machines is a company called JSR, JSR Vending, um, and they're based, it's a guy called Stuart Retson, and he's based, uh, he's just based, based outside Dundee. Um, he's the main supplier, he's installed many machines up and down, up and down the country, and he's very approachable, uh, give him a call, I can Whoever it is, I'm not keeping a track of the chat, Rob. But whoever it is, please get in touch, and I can pass you. You know, I can pass you his his contact details. Perfect. Um, right. So um, as as we go on, I mean, please feel free to use the chat box that's there for any questions as we go through. Um, it means we can pick them up, and and if there's ones that we need to go away and research an answer for, uh, at least we'll have it logged, and we can come back to you. Uh, there was also a question there as well about um, putting out information pack means that we'll put something together and we'll send it out we, we should have everybody's email address so anybody that wants um further information things like that we can send it out to you so i will hand you over to gordon next who will, will take you on for the next segment of this webinar okay uh thanks rob uh well good evening everybody and just before i start sharing my screen just uh, a little bit about myself uh my name's gordon newlands uh i'm a butcher to trade that's all I've uh, ever been, and I, uh, I always hold that up, uh, that as I am extremely proud of the craft and the trade uh, that I am, I am part of. Uh, 37 years in the industry, and I know you'll find that very hard to believe with my youthful and boyish good looks, but, well, unfortunately, <laughs> that's very true. Uh, red meat is my passion. Uh, I love talking about it, so apologies, Rob, if I go over. Uh, I've worked in various organisations all my life uh, linked to the red meat in industry and uh, my last post before I came back to Scotland to work with QMS was working for a, an American ingredients firm based in Leeds that I worked with uh, all the uh, red meat uh, uh, companies in the UK and Ireland to develop products for Aldi, Lidl, Tesco, M&S, M&S mainly but uh, the rest of the retailers followed suit. So QMS came last year. I came back to Scotland. I think the older I got, staying away from home Monday to Friday, took a toll on my body uh, and, uh, and my weight. We eat out every night. Uh, however, I uh, uh, came back to Scotland and my role is brand development manager. So my role specifically is uh, to manage the Scotch Beef Club, which is the hospitality and restaurant uh, sector, which, as you all know, is uh, on its knees at the minute. Uh, and the other sector is the Scotch Butchers Club, of which we have 250 members uh, all over the UK. We've got 63 in England, which is fantastic because it's all about brand visibility uh, for us. And we hope uh, that we will grow that number. However, there is another sector to my job that I uh, also manage the brand licensing scheme, which is... Uh, part of the, the, the farmers, crofters that are selling direct to the public. Uh, as part of Scottish Government, as a non-departmental body, we have to regulate the use of the logo and license the logo, really. So uh, farmers and crofters uh, apply to join the brand's licensing scheme, which is free to, free to uh, use and apply for. Uh, and you get, then get the, the use of the Scotch beef, Scotch lamb, specially select pork, 
whichever protein you're really uh, you're really selling. Uh, and I was telling Rob the other day actually that we since I started in May last year, we've had 30 new members of the brand's licensing scheme all over Scotland. And I think they've brought into the red meat industry sector just shy of half a million pounds, uh, which is fantastic. It's great to see that there's no uh, conflict with the butcher, independent butcher whatsoever. It's absolutely fantastic. And most of them will actually use the independent butcher to cut their product up and pack it and send it back to farm. So it's all, uh, it's all good that side. Uh, so I'll share my screen. Tonight I'm going to share what we are actually doing for the Scotch Butchers Club, uh, but it might not be relevant to some of you at the minute, but what we will do, what we are looking at is we're looking at revamping the brand's licensing scheme for 2022 and uh, having it more of a separate club so we can, uh, you know, maybe put a bit of money behind it so we can then utilise some of the, the points I'm going to see, uh, show you here. So I'll share the screen. Uh, that's it. Uh, can you see that? Yep, okay. Uh, so the Scotch Butchers Club, when I came on board, it was in highly need of a, a revamp. So we revamped uh, the, the logo and uh, as you can see, the, the Scotch Butchers Club logo is, is gone. It used to be a, a, a bull's head, I think, in a blue uh, a blue shield. However, it's now the Scotch Butchers Club with the, the knife crossing the T. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's very relevant. So uh, we... Oh, sorry, where am I going here? No. No. Okay. So we need to look back to look forward. So it was highly relevant that we revamped the, the Scotch uh, Butchers Club. And it was in dire need of, you know, some, some love and care and attention. So we relaunched uh, in September, October last year. And uh, we had an independent review. Uh, we interviewed about 70 stakeholders in the industry to make sure that we were on the correct lines. I knew what I wanted to do, but I needed to make sure that it was correct for all our stakeholders in the butchery industry. Uh, and what came back was very hard hitting, uh, but it was exactly what we needed to have a clear pathway uh, forward. Uh, so the relaunch. So I wanted this to take place all over the UK. And we chose four regional stores and one model store. And what we did with the model store, which was the, the butchery in, in Lockerbie, uh, we branded that store up. Uh, and the reason we did that, we branded that store up, took a, a lot of photographs of it and put all the images on a flash drive. We also, on the day of launch, we covered the whole of the UK. So we had a shop in St. Andrews, we had a shop in Wick, and we had a shop in uh, South Sea on the south coast of England, and we had a shop in Arran that launched all at the same time, all in the same day. And the PR was, was really, really good for that. Uh, I think that what we did with it, we uploaded all these images to a flash drive and I'll tell you exactly what happened with the flash drive later on. But I think it shows that all these images gave the members an opportunity to brand their business really, really well with all our, with all our images. And it was really well received. And for me, the businesses that we have chosen had never been used before ever by QMS. So it made them, I, I want to create an inclusive uh, family community as such so this uh, and the next one is so model and regional stores RH5 Herald John O'Groat Journal the Portsmouth News the Scottish Farmer you know South Sea uh, John Buckwell in South Sea had a fantastic launch and uh, he supplies a lot of the MOD the Royal Navy ships uh, 
I think for uh, our learnings we can take from it is we maybe should have put a consumer hook onto it to make sure that you know we get that consumer uh, uh, interaction as well. However, it was 50,000 near circulation. Uh, but the best thing for me, because it was industry-led, uh, I think I got about 25 new members off the Scotch Butchers Club because of the relaunch. So it was, they were attracted because they seen the new aprons, the t-shirts and the look and feel and the direction of travel that we wanted to take the, the business in. And it actually got the club back on its feet uh, again, really. So this is, a, this is a, a, one of our members and this, is, this shows you what level of help and marketing we can do. Uh, S. Collins and Son in Muirhead in Glasgow is, is a very well established business. Stuart Collins uh, has taken, took over from his father about 15 years ago and has really built the business up to just a superb business. Uh, it's very high class, serves the local community extremely well. And Stuart uh, had the opportunity to go into a uh, a convenience uh, retail uh, aspect in Scotmid in Addingston. They, they had a butcher in there before, which didn't really, unfortunately, work out for them. So we helped with the marketing behind that. So the images that you see Stuart standing in front of, they, they are all our images. Uh, Stuart was proud to uh, say that he's a member of the Scotch Butchers Club. We helped him financially uh, for that. Uh, for that launch and uh, unbelievably the, it, that took place in November, the first week in November and the basket spend of Scott Med was up £4.80 per basket uh, after its second week uh, and I know at Christmas time uh, he was uh, £25,000 over his projected budget, uh, projected uh, income for Christmas so it just shows that you know, for me, yes, the market uh, absolutely was rammed home uh, on all his uh, all his products. He buys a lot of scotch from from Lanark Market and uh, from various uh, processors uh, in Scotland as well. So that just shows the the, the level of support that uh, QMS uh, can give. The promo co promo kits uh, we sent out as uh a welcome to the club. So when we relaunched the club, every member was sent a promo kit. And this, which included an apron, a t-shirt, uh, a catalogue, a welcome letter from, from Alan Clark, and a flash drive. Now the flash drive included all the marketing collateral that we had completed in the regional store and the model store. And it gave them an idea. And off the back of that, promo kit, uh, I think we've branded probably about 10 or 12 shops, sorry, the butchers have branded the, about 10 or 12 shops uh, by themselves with our uh, material, which is, which is fantastic because it is all about brand visibility. The, the more message we can get out to the consumer about the Scotch beef, Scotch lamb, specially select port logos, the better. Uh, and again, it's the direction of travel that we're heading in. It was modern, it was fresh, it's clean looking. Uh, and the, the comments about it were extremely positive uh, when so and I think that you know you'll always get you'll always get an I-Bean brigade in any in any club uh, but for me you know uh, you're either in the club or, or, or you're not you, you know you have to you have to sometimes draw a line and the, the, the member, we didn't lose any members, which was fantastic. You know, in fact, as I said, we gained 25 members. And I'm also acutely aware my role is to help uh, butchers uh, make, make money, uh, also drive footfall and sales to butchers. Uh, so that's exactly what this promo kit helped with. Christmas is what we make it. This is an example of some of the, the, the marketing that we completed uh, for Christmas, last Christmas, 2020. We completed it over seven days, seven days of Christmas. A social media part was all sent to members. And this is with the main aim to drive footfall to butchers. 
and we were, but we were also, we weren't just aiming at the one day of Christmas. We were aiming for the days in between, you know, so we didn't just want the, the once a year shopper going to butchers to say, oh, well, can I have my, can I order my turkey or my red meat or, you know, we wanted them to go over that period of time. And it was a bumper Christmas this year, 11.6 billion was was the figure for retail, which is the largest ever. Uh, so we think it worked. Butchers were absolutely delighted. We sent them in-store digital and static images. We had recipe stills. We sent an A2 window poster, which you all used. Uh, Christmas at the scotchkitchen.com website. And we had make it uh, case studies. We were a little bit late. Getting, getting the product out, but that was just a marketing uh, problem that we had. However, uh, it was extremely well received. And, you know, as I say, it, it was difficult to try and judge, but year on year, we still see butchers uh, are still up sitting between 25 and 35% uh, year on year figures. So that is an example of the, the four autumn campaigns that we send butchers uh, to uh, uh, to promote the, the brand. Now, Callum actually touched on this consumer social media. media it's an integral part of, of any business. And it, it, Callum is absolutely bang on with saying that, you know, you, you really need to, to consider one platform out the the three or four that's out there. And, you know, Facebook is extremely good. Uh, but Instagram is is the growing channel. Instagram is the growing channel for uh, uh, you know to get sales, uh, and we actually increased our increased our posts on butcher focused. Now I think going back, QMS didn't really have a major focus on butchers. It was it was all retail driven, which actually caused some problems with the butchers. Uh, so. By employing me, uh, my focus is purely butchers and farmers and crofters that are selling direct to the public. So I managed to get a bit of budget for it. And, you know, the social media increased, new branding introduced and implemented, social videos created, the monthly plans I share with all the members a month ahead. And that gives them an idea to put it into their social media content plan. Uh, and it's, you know, that links for me, it's about, you know, Callum is saying websites can link with your social media. It has to be linked. There has to be a synergy there. Uh, and again, it's butcher focused content introduced into our influencer strategy. So QMS employs 60 influencers across, across Scotland. Uh, and for example, we set them a butcher's challenge that they had to go to their local butcher buy uh, buy some uh, a cut of steak, uh, you know, and the, buy the veg at the local greengrocer, and come up with a, a recipe inspiration for that, uh, which was extremely well received. Now, as you can imagine, sixty influencers that all have more than two thousand followers, so that's hitting over one hundred twenty thousand followers, and then all their own followers as well. So it soon gets out to a, a mass amount of people. And I think that's where, uh, going back to Callum again, he was right in saying that if you can link that with your existing customers and your friends and families, it then snowballs into something absolutely massive uh, for you. Uh, and so I think what's important for the butchers is they receive the monthly pa plans uh, a month in advance. Uh, and it gives them time to actually plan on what's what's coming out. You just need to look at uh, a Joyce at Armadale, you know, uh, eight and a half thousand followers. And for me, you know, the, the reasons she's one of the reasons she's a success is she's honest. She's honest about herself and the industry, and it's fantastic to see uh, and listen to. You, you know, I, I, when I get notifications on my phone, it, it, it's fantastic, you know, to, to listen to what she's up to and how she's doing it. And, you know, that just proves to me that, you know, someday way up in Sutherland, my home my home region, uh, it's just great to, to hear. Uh, and it's, it's about somebody, an ex-butcher told me years and years ago, 
uh, is a strap line. It's the story you tell about the product you sell. You know, you have to create that story, and Callum touched on that as well. So the future uh, for us, uh, our website, uh, the Scotch Butchers Club website, goes live next Thursday. Uh, and on that site, we have a cuts calculator, a portion calculator. It's consumer-led, but there's also a section on there for butcher to butcher, as well as butcher to consumer. Uh, on the back office of that, there will be a portal that everybody will build, uh, the butchers will build a sign in to and download uh, market images, uh, images of uh, cuts of beef, cuts of lamb, cuts of pork, and then, uh, you know, they then can use that uh, on their own social media and websites. So what's next? This is our plans going forward. I'll be in entirely honest with you, this is a, an example of what, how we can help an organization uh, uh, such, as a, such as the Butchers Club or, the, you know, Farmers Crofters. Uh, so the state kit is, has went out, it, land, it landed today uh, with all the butchers. Uh, each member got, received 100 copies, uh, which we think is, is nice and fresh. It, it's actually dispelling the myths about shopping with a butcher. Uh, and you know, because the, the industry feedback we got was butchers are sometimes grumpy. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to lie, sometimes they are grumpy, but we're trying to dispel those myths. Uh, so Stake went out, we're running a virtual competition to coincide with Butchers Week. Uh, the voucher scheme went out. So what we'll be doing is we'll be any competition that any of our departments over QMS have, there'll be vouchers for our Butchers Club and our Beef Club when the hospitality sector gets back up and running. Uh, uh, stationery has all been rebranded, uh, can be in line with the new launch. The renewal kits will go out in April when uh, butchers ready, are ready to renew for 2021. Uh, I've appointed four ambassadors uh, for our club and they are all under 25 uh, and four extremely good butchers uh, out there that uh, two men and two females uh, that will uh, promote the industry, promote the craft and the skill of our industry, not only, to end, not only to industry, but to consumers as well, because it's going to be on all our social media channels and our website channels. Barbecue kit, ready, that's going out for uh, barbecue each week, launching on 24th, 24th of May. Everybody's, everybody's foodies, everybody likes outdoor cooking. Uh, and so we need to link in with everything like that, everything uh, project like that. The Make It Summer, it's not really been signed off yet as yet, but it's, you know, uh, it's very much like the, the Make It With Summer, uh, the Make It uh, With Christmas. And, you know, the Scotch experience, we've uh, we potentially going to tie in to uh, go rural and visit Scotland. They both want to work with us. Uh, so that might tie in some of the farmers and crofters that are selling direct, uh, direct to uh, the public. Consumer-led competition, which is going to be a product evaluation of Butcher's products uh, in quarter three. Make it autumn uh, is coming again. And th this uh, Scotch Lamb for St Andrew's Day was a massive uh, promotion for us uh, in partnership with United, United Auctions. Uh, we want to make lamb, eating lamb, a synergy with uh, St. Andrew's Day. And uh, it was, I think I've got the stats here, actually. The, it was how much, uh, it was lamb sales were up the week of our promotion, 26%. So it showed that, you know, we were, uh, were hitting the right channels there. United Auctions absolutely bought into it as well. We had a cook along with Tony Singh and, the MD of United Auctions, George Purvis, who's a who's a good friend of mine and a Selkirk man, uh, is was uh, cooking along with Tony Singh. I don't know how successful his dish was, but uh, you know it was it was really good. Uh, and you know just getting that interaction, and then you know we come to the Make It Festive again. You know we come to a full a, a, a full year's uh, promotion, and that's. That's a, that. Those are all examples of of what we have, what we offer uh, the the butchers. And 
I'm getting back to the brand's licensing scheme now. Now, as I said before, there was 13 new members since uh, since uh, July, uh, which brings in just shy of half a million pounds. Now, my role in a in a normal year, obviously, I I've been in lockdown since I since I joined QMS. Uh, however, uh, my role is is to be uh, on the road and. You know, if any farmer or crofter or butcher wants any help with value added, wants help with, Callum mentioned, packaging, you know, we have links to all the packaging companies in the UK that could potentially give you all discounts, uh, you know, which I can share with Callum as well. Uh, it's absolutely, there's absolutely no problem. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got a list of three or four that I have to go to once lockdown is over and I get the green light from, uh, from Scottish government. Uh, to get out and about so please you know if if you're thinking of starting something or or, or you have started something you know i've i've helped a few with advice and there are very very good examples out there and i think colin touched on a few of them some of them are some of them are my members uh there's some very good meat box companies out there that do extremely well. There's one in Persia that is just fantastic, you know, and young couple that are really, really switched on and really going for it. And, you know, that's a shining light for me that, you know, they've seen a, a bit of farm diversification and just, you know, said, right, we're, we're going for this and, and absolutely do uh, go for it. But what I would say online sales is the fastest growing channel and interestingly it's driven by older demographics so i've just quickly noted down a, a, a stat when Callum was speaking 90 percent of shoppers at christmas time were in the 55 to 64 year old bracket and 78 percent were in the 65 plus year old category so it's that older demographic and that might count for them um, being scared of going to supermarkets, you know, uh, the retail market, uh, re retailers were held up to be as the biggest infection site that you could go to, you know. So, is it the fact that they're they're scared to go? But online sales is just absolutely huge. I have a I have a good friend of mine that has a butcher shop on the west coast. It's not a big butcher shop by any means, but he told me today that he had sold 170 packs. And average pack cost was fifty-two pounds from Monday to Wednesday this week. So you can tell, you know, you can do the math yourself that he still got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, his big days to go. And I just think there's a massive opportunity for uh, you know farmers and crofters to absolutely. If there's an online hub or you know you all want to collaborate together. Exactly what Callum was mentioning. I think there's massive opportunities to you to get your product out to the consumer uh, directly because it's all about provenance. It's all about locality. People want to know now where the product is coming from. And you guys have the perfect story. You know, perfect story. So uh, that's me, Rob. I hope I've I hope I've not went <laughs> went over time. I'll stop. I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, no, perfect. Perfect, Gordon. That was excellent. Thank you very much. Um, you have a lot of questions, so <laughs> hopefully uh, we can we can answer a few of these. Um, there was a, a cracking question there about, um, you know, how, how would small producers join the QMS licensing and branding scheme? And as well, uh, asking about the, you know, can the, the small crofters and small producers join or is it just butchers? Not um, at all. Uh, not at all. The, 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 the small crofters and farmers, the, the brand licensing scheme was set up exactly for that use. And I don't think it's been highly uh, promoted uh, over the years uh, within QMS. I, I, I actually don't know that, but you know, we're, we're speaking to people this year. I, I don't think it has been highly promoted, but brand licensing scheme is there for a reason. And it's exactly for farmers and crofters uh, to sign up, to get use of the logos. Uh, how you would go about it, you would email me, uh, Rob, I can pass my details on to you, Rob, and you can certainly, you know, uh, share that with the the, the participants on the, on the webinar tonight. Uh, and absolutely, the Scotch Butchers Club. Unfortunately, you have to have a a retail a retail business. So whether if you have a croft and you open a farm shop on that croft, yes, and and you're employing a butcher, 
yes, you can join that Scotch Butchers Club because you have then consumers coming into your retail environment. Unfortunately, Croft's selling direct to the public. They can't become members of the Scotch Butchers Club. However, what I was going to say was, as I mentioned before, the brand licensing scheme, we are reviewing that starting in, in June uh, this year. And what I hope to have next year, because everybody, uh, the, uh, the renewal period is January to January uh, for the brand licensing scheme. And I hope to have the farmers and crofters in some form of club that I can promote as, uh, uh, you know, as, as one. You know, uh, so that's so. I know there's a few questions there, Rob. So I'm not going to rattle, rattle on. No, that's, that's excellent. That's no bother at all. Um, I think another question was um, for the, the the brand license scheme. Do you, do you have to be accredited in some way um, as inspections? Yeah, and uh, uh, you have to be, you have to have a be on a QMS uh, uh, livestock holding. It has to be have a QMS. So, so uh, and in turn that has a that gets audited every year. Okay, that's good. Um, the next question was, um, how are QMS using recent lockdown environmental benefits to educate consumers regarding sustainable meat production? Well, our health and education teams are, uh, are out, well, not out, but over Zoom and teams uh, dialing into classrooms, as I am. Uh, I had two today, two to uh, a class of hospitality students and uh, one uh, to a group of 16 to 19 year olds unemployed uh, that hoping to try and get into the sector, not just, not just butchery, but, you know, trying to get into farming, you know, there's lots of different avenues in farming that you, that you can try. But yeah, the health and education, it's, it's not really my sector, but the, the, my directive, I suppose, but the health and education team are, are, you know, they've just completed a farm and food steps uh, video, which is fantastic, uh, and the sustainability uh, point. Uh, our marketing director Leslie Cameron is uh, is working on some uh, seriously good uh, video uh, productions. The, I don't know if anybody's seen the recent STV advert about QMS. You know that I think the num I've not got the numbers, so apologies, I've not got the numbers, but I think the numbers were absolutely massive you know uh, that we received on that so uh, I'm sorry I couldn't answer that fully but uh, hopefully that'll uh, suffice. Uh, question for you Callum um, you mentioned about selling gin is it easy for a farm shop to get a license? Yeah it's a good question uh, if I'm truthfully honest um, I'm not sure because I'm not an expert on uh, alcoholic drinks and um, although I see it's Robert uh, that's asked that question. Rob, if we could get Robert's details, and I will, uh, I will go and ask others in the team. Um, one of my colleagues uh, has actually helped set up distilleries and various other bits of bobs. So I will, I will actually, I'll go and ask her, and I'll get back to, to Robert and the rest of everyone if they want it. Perfect. Well, that, that brings us on to another question. Uh, people are looking for your details as well, Gordon. Your contact. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly, I, I never put them on the last slide, uh, Rob, but I'll send them to you and can you, yeah, can you well, share them? Yeah, we're going to put together um, an information hub anyway, which will be links to all the, the various different things that we've discussed in, in, in this meeting and, and the next two meetings as well, um, which we'll, we'll put references into that. Um, if there's any other questions as well, I mean, please feel free to, to send messages to us. You have Callum's details there. Um, we can, I'll, I'll, we'll put up a, a link on the FAS website or we have everybody's email address as well. We'll put around a, a, a sort of a brief summary of the meeting as well. And if you've got other questions as well, we've, we've run out of time, but we have um, plenty of capacity to answer questions throughout the rest of the week and, and beyond. You know, So if you have any more questions that you want to, to follow up on, please send them to us and we'll refer you to, to, to somebody that knows. Um, but I think that's that, that we'll, we'll leave it at that for, for tonight anyway. Uh, thank you very much for everybody that's attended. I hope that you get something out of it. Um, and uh, I look forward to hear from you in the future.